Good morning. Welcome to Books at the Bottom of the Stairs. My name's Lorene. It's a beautiful May morning. It's kind of unexpected for Nova Scotia. I think that you know how they talk about climate change and stuff and I uh, don't know whether that's part of what's happening here or whether it's just a natural cycle of things changing but May has turned into one of the lovelier months here and uh, it sort of goes beautiful May and then soggy June. So we're actually getting gardening done. I didn't used to put the winter stuff away until, you know, well after the 24th of May. Um, so anyways, we've got a beautiful day outside that we've been working in the garden. And if you hear really weird noises, that's because Steve is pulling his old Volkswagen Beetle out of the garage and uh, trying to get the battery to start in the hopes that he can ride it around for the long weekend. So um, anyways, you never know with Steve. He's, <laughs> I think he's off being quiet somewhere and then so we'll see how, see how that goes. Well, today, as you can see, I've got quite a huge list of books to talk about. I'm not going to talk about them in length because that would be crazy. But one of the things that I do as uh, someone who's videoing is I have about oh, about 10 booktubers that do vlogs that I pick recommendations from. And I've been doing that for two years now, but prior to that I would read um, a magazine called Hornbook and get my recommendations for middle grade uh, books and YA books from there. Um, so I'm kind of trying to catch up on it, but what I noticed in the last 20, where are we? We're in 2020, 2021. I've noticed that some books that were recommended in 2020 that I had asterisks, um, have started to come up in people's, uh, book reviews. So, you know, I write it down again and then I've gone back and seen, oh yeah, I've written that down once or twice. And because some of the booktubers are similar in what they suggest, I've noticed it on a couple of booktube sites. So that's just another reason why I decided to get out my library card and go library shopping. But speaking of shopping, there I noticed at Christmas time there's this series that's the British Library Women Writers Series. And uh, I believe um, it's the British Library that's putting these out. And what they've gone and done is picked a number of author female authors who were popular in their time, but that have sort of drifted back down and they have, you know, total merit and everything. It's just a question of sort of aging out of what, what the population is looking for in a book, but they were totally solid during their time. And I think that's an interesting, um, you know, like for instance, uh, who the, the Diana Gabaldon series, you know, I've, I didn't love it, but um, I could see that in maybe a hundred years that might, be re recitated. I don't think it's going to last a hundred years, but anyway, you know, in terms of ongoing popularity, I think it will kind of drift down to the bottom. But you know, what I'm trying to say is, is that these authors are worth revisiting. So they have, I have bought four and the reason I was attracted to them was entirely because of their covers. They're so well designed. They're so pretty. So they totally captured my, you know, my eye candy, um, squirrel. And uh, my girlfriend and I uh, are doing something, this is a tangent, we are sort of, we're in lockdown again, so what we decided one day was to just mail each other something. And so I mailed her one of these books, and I don't think it's on her top of the list to read at all, because it's really not in her wheelhouse. But, you know, it was pretty, it was eye candy. So she has one of the books, and I just finished reading my husband, I'm sorry, did not read that one. <laughs> the Tree of Heaven by May Sinclair. And May Sinclair, from, this is from 1910, and that's the other thing I should mention is that each decade features one or two authors. So I don't know how many they're going to do. I guess it depends how the first um, six or eight go. Um, so I read this one. It's the earliest one in the group, as far as I know. And May, May Sinclair was a really prolific author at that time and she was also known for her 1912 pro-suffrage pamphlet Feminism 
And um, one of the fun things about this book is we do get a biography of the authors and what their writing history has been and whether they were, in this case, May Sinclair was political. And she was also an advocate of the Freudian psychology. And so she had an interesting working life and she had an interesting personal life. So you get this really nice vignette of this woman who um, has written this book that is apropos of her time. So. I don't think that I would have picked this up if it hadn't been for the eye candy and you know the the, the all the stuff I just described because it's um, what should I say? It, it, there's it's sort of plotless. I it, it's of that genre of book that's more more anecdotal, episodic. We get to know a family, we get to know all the characters in the family, and we see them from young children and the parents, and then as time goes we start to see the young children as adults and the parents as the minor characters. And so this sort of interesting kind of little loopy thing happening there. And um, we get to see sometimes how wrong the parents are in their assessment of what their children are all about especially as they become adults, because the parents are kind of determined to not recognize that their children are adults. This is written at the time, at the beginning of uh, World War I, where there was just really pro-British sentiment and how the war was just a glorious thing. And so as a Quaker pacifist, it's hard to imagine that ideal of, of war is a glorious thing. Uh, the two characters who end up, there are multiple characters who end up going to the war, but there's two that we follow in particular, and um, so I can't, can't spoil anything. But I didn't, I think if she'd written this book three years later, she might have had quite a different slant on that whole section of the book. Because uh, it's, you know, it's before things get to, tiresome before people get worn out by the length of the war as it's going on and before some of the um what would you call it the the battle fatigue of the citizens starts to creep in so anyways that's a whole different topic but that's sort of what what may is exploring this family dynamic and and the adulthoodness of the four children and the parenting of the two adult to parents and there's lots of scandals in and around and there's you know there's action happening but it doesn't have a a through plot line so I'm not sure what that kind of a book is called where we're not really huh it's kind of a and it's not a saga either because it's not as if we're seeing multiple generations of success and failure and so on it so it's just anyways that was the very popular at the time and so this was a really good best-selling book um, I'm not talking too long, but the other two that I have in my hands are Chatterton Square by E.H. Young and My Husband Simon by Molly Panter Downs. And I will report on those as I read them, but I will say that I enjoyed this. I would give this um, a three and a half out of five. All right, these other books are the ones that I was talking about that other booktubers have uh, remarked upon and that I, you know, kept putting check marks beside. So really excited by these. Uh, do you know, I don't know if you get this, where you pick up a book and it feels right. You can pick up, you can go to a bookstore and you just, you kind of look at it and you go there and you go there and you go there and you go, no, it doesn't sing. And then there's other books where you, you do the same thing and you go, that one feels right. I don't know, like between the blurbs and the feeling of the book and the s smell of the book, they some of them just kind of land in your hands. So this is The Map of Salt and Stars by Jennifer Zainab Yukadar. Now, Steve's reading this right now, and he says there's two plot lines going on. It's during the Syrian war, which is quite difficult to read, although he won't tell me why it's difficult to read. And it's following a young girl and her mother as they are refugees from the Syrian war. At the same time, there's um, Arabic kind of, mm, um, like astronomy, the sciences of the Arabic world are part of this journey. So there are two, uh, one's, a, one's a plot line and one's sort of a setting, um, wrapping around this. So he said it's very good and so I'm looking really forward to, to getting it back out of his hands. Now this one is by Ya Gayasi. I loved her writing the other book, uh, 
her loved her previous book homecoming i gave that one five out of five and oh my god it was so good so based on that transcended kingdom by Ye Gyasi is on my list steve's got this on his uh, table so i won't see it anytime soon but i've got plenty to distract me i have heard nicola upson's Jesse, josephine tay mystery being recommended over and over and over again so this is her first one an expert in murder and i'm about 12 pages in and i'm enjoying it so far quite a bit better than that other uh, mystery i reported on this is a project i've been working on canadian women a classic authors and the double hook by sheila watson is the next one and uh let me see it's about a tight-knit community in the bc interior here among the hills of caribou country men and women are caught up in the double hook of existence unaware that flight from danger and the search for glory are both part of the same journey so it's, again it's part of the landscape uh, the landscape is part of the character of the uh, story and it's the battle of humankind against the landscape i I guess that was one of the things I was introduced to uh, early on as a reader, so I, I enjoy those. All right, this one is totally the other side of the coin, An Orc on the Wild Side by Tom Holt. Being the Dark Lord and Prince of Evil is not as much fun as it sounds, particularly if you are a basically decent person. Technically, King Mordak is more goblin than person, but at the point is that he's really keen to be a lot less despicable than his predecessors. So yeah, he's trying to convince the other goblins to um, introduce a healthcare program. And <laughs> it's just, it's supposed to be comical. Um, and someone along the way said that Tom Holt tended towards the humorous side of his different books. So I thought that just sounded kind of rollicking. This one is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. And I don't remember what it's all about, to tell you the truth. It's lose yourself in the world of arcs in the company of an unforgettable character in this French runaway hit by debut author Christelle Debeau. And it's going to be part of a quartet. And I, it's a bit of a biggie, but I think it's going to be kind of light, maybe light fantasy. Is there a fantasy? Yeah. Oh, I got it right. It's a light fantasy. Thank goodness the library put stickers on it takes away half the things you have to remember. This one I'm really looking forward to. Oh no, am I wrong? I am looking forward to this one, but not as much as the next one. The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin. And it's a young, it's a middle reader. And I don't remember what it's about, but it's on my, it's been on my checklist for quite a while. Oh, and it actually took a long time to come in too. It was on hold for ages. And this one was just reviewed the other day by, um, Hang on, it'll come to me. Oh, oh, I can see your face. That's so po. And uh, she really recommended it quite highly. The Year I Flew Away by Mary Arnold. Now, okay, so I'm just going on memory, so total, total breakdown probably. I believe this is about a young girl who's coming from a country where English is not the main language. And so she and her mom are trying to settle into I think Chicago, and it's telling about you know, the, the difficulties of being the new girl with no English in a community that's not really that happy to see you, um, as well as missing the people back home and, and just trying to fit in. So uh, I think there's a bit of magic in this one. Doesn't say on the no sticker. Um, so I, I, anyway, she recommended it so beautifully. It was such a good review. I'll link that in the, the doobly-doo below. And um, I, this is the one I'm really looking forward to, but I'm going to save it for that blah moment. I don't know if you get those where you've read a couple of books and they're kind of meh, and then you think, oh, I really need a pick-me-up. So that's my pick-me-up. Anyhow, I don't know how long this went for. I'm sorry if it went too long for you, but hey-ho. And I hope that all your reading dreams and adventures continue to come true. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.